Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the Cuisinart Air Fryer Toaster Oven. This can be used as a toaster, air fryer, and an oven. It's 1800 watts, measures 16 inches wide, 15 and a half inches deep, and 14 inches tall. It weighs 21 pounds, so it's a large unit, it's heavy, and you're not going to want to move this around. It's best to find a permanent place for this on your counter. Although the unit is big, I like the clean look of it, and also the dials. They seem very solid. The power cord is about 29 inches long. For storage, the cord can be wrapped around the bottom of the unit. You should be able to air fry up to three pounds of food, cook a 12 inch pizza, four pound chicken, and toast up to six slices of bread. There are two heating elements on the bottom and four on top. This is the power indicator light that stays on while cooking. There are four dials. The first is the on slash oven timer dial. You'll use this dial to set the timer for all functions except for toast. The timer can be set up to 60 minutes. This is the temperature dial that goes from warm to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, toast, broil. This is the function dial. You can choose warm, broil, convection broil, toast, bake, convection bake, and air fry. The fourth dial is for toast. Choose from light, medium, or dark shade. And this button is for the oven light. Press it and there is a light inside the oven that turns on. The light is in the back of the oven and it only turns on with the door closed. To turn the unit on, choose your function. Let's say we're choosing bake. Then you would set the temperature. Let's say 350. Choose the amount of time you want to cook. I'll put it to 20 minutes. The power indicator light will turn on and the oven starts heating up. To turn the unit off, turn the on oven timer to off and the indicator light will go off. If you're toasting, make sure that the toast timer dial is set to off also. Whether you're using any of these functions or the toast function, once the timer runs out, the unit will automatically turn off. The unit comes with a leaflet for rack positions, cooking functions, and an air fryer guide with the food, max amounts, temperature and time, and a full instruction manual and recipe booklet. There are recipes for chicken wings, a whole roast chicken, french fries, and desserts like cakes and muffins. You can cook bacon, other frozen items like chicken nuggets, fish sticks, steak fries, and fresh shrimp, tortilla chips, etc. For baking, you can use your own dishes in the oven, anything that's oven safe. This is a nine inch cake pan and it fits perfectly in the oven. There are vents on both sides of the oven, so make sure not to cover it and give it plenty of space around the unit. The crumb tray is on the bottom. Slide it out and remove it for cleaning. The unit comes with a rack, air fryer basket, and a baking pan. When air frying, always put the basket on the pan and use it. Both the baking pan and the rack were packaged at the bottom of the box. After you lift out the oven, look for these two in cardboard on the bottom. You do want to follow this guide for the rack positions. There are two different positions here for the rack or the baking tray, and it's clearly marked one and two. The oven rack can be placed on the bottom in position one. or on the top in position two. Use position two, the top, for broiling, air frying, and toasting. Position one is for baking. So if you're cooking a frozen pizza, you can put it directly on the rack in position two. For a fresh pizza, put it on the pan in position one. When baking, just like a regular oven, you can heat the unit up for five minutes, then put your cake or muffin batter in the oven and start the timer. Just a note about bake, and convection bake. The convection bake has a little fan next to it. Convection baking circulates hot air around the food so there's even browning. If your recipe says bake at 425 degrees Fahrenheit and you use the convection oven function, set your temperature to 400 degrees. The convection baking temp is generally 25 degrees less than the standard oven baking temp. A couple of things you shouldn't do with the unit. Don't cover the pan or anything else in foil. If you are going to use foil, you can cut the foil just to fit inside the pan. Nothing should be overhanging. Also, don't use any glass dishes while broiling. First, let's try making toast. Use the rack in position two on top. I'm using plain white bread. You can fit six slices easily on the rack. Just turn the bread sideways. Turn the toast timer. I'm going to set it to medium. So if you're making toast, you only need to use the 
toast timer dial, set it to the shade you want, and the indicator light will turn on and start toasting. It's been four and a half minutes and I see that the toast is browning a lot, so I'm just gonna turn the timer off and take it out. When you take the rack out, just lift it up and slide it out. All the slices look evenly toasted. For toast, I would suggest putting the dial between light and medium, because I think if I had uh, let this go for the entire medium cycle, it would have gotten too dark. There are four heating elements on top, so the top is nice and even. On the bottom, there are two heating elements, so all the bread slices on the bottom are not gonna be perfect. This one on the end, is more white on the bottom, and this one in the back is more brown. Then again, there are no real perfect slot toasters out there, so this is perfectly fine. Empty out the crumbs. Next, we'll make french fries. These are three russet potatoes that I've cut up into about quarter inch thick pieces. I'll add a teaspoon salt and a teaspoon of olive oil. Very, very little oil. This is the recipe from the Cuisinart booklet. The only difference is they sprayed the potatoes with oil and I'm just gonna toss it with oil. You can, of course, air fry using no oil at all, but I like to use just a small amount of oil so the fries look better. With no oil, the fries will be crispy, but it's a different texture. It's a little crackly and uh, dry on top. I've set the air fryer basket on the baking pan. For the fries to be evenly crispy all over, they should really be in a single layer. These are three medium potatoes and you can see they just fit into a single layer. For the best results, for them to get evenly crispy, this is the maximum you can use in the basket. Use position two. The temperature should be 400 degrees. Function is air fry, all the way to the right. And we'll set the timer for 15 minutes. The machine is not that loud. When it's on, you'll hear the ticking and a low fan. It's been about 10 minutes. With the light on, you can see the tops of the french fries are browning. If you open the door, the machine turns off. It turns back on when you close the door. They look very brown, so I'm just gonna pull this out. They are very brown, but some of the pieces are not cooked. I'll leave it to turn off by itself. The timer's a little off. I had set my phone timer to 15 minutes and um, that went out about a minute ago and this is still going. I'm gonna turn it off. I turned it off because I saw the fries are getting very brown and if they get any more brown, they'll be burnt. The top of the fry is brown and the bottom is white. It's crispy, it tastes really good. The recipe said a teaspoon of salt and it's a little much. So my recommendations are to use a temperature that's less than 400, maybe 350 or 375. And I think at that temperature, the fries wouldn't brown so much and they would still be cooked. Use half a teaspoon salt. You can always add more after the fries are cooked. With other air fryers I've reviewed, like the Philips, for example, the basket is not um, rectangular like this. It's an actual basket shape and it's easy to pull out the handle and toss the fries around during cooking. And that shaking helps in a more even browning on top and bottom of the fries. With this tray, you can't exactly pull it out and shake it, it's very awkward. There is some space between the rack and the pan so air can circulate, but it doesn't seem to be enough to make the bottom of the fries golden. The fries on the back right seem to be darker, but they're more evenly browned on all sides. Let the fries cool for a minute before taking them off the basket and they come off much easier. If you pull them off while they're really hot, they'll tend to stick. The rack is pretty clean after you take the fries off. Now I'll try making chicken wings. These are whole wings that I separated. They're drumettes and wingettes. It's a total of 20 pieces. I'll sprinkle three quarters of a teaspoon coarse salt. I used coarse salt on the potatoes also, not table salt. Since there's skin, you don't need to put any oil on the wings. The 20 pieces fit perfectly in the basket. Put it into the top rack, number two. The same temperature, 400 degrees. Choose air fry and set the timer for 20 minutes. The 20 minutes on my phone timer is up, but the timer on the oven is still going. 
browning on top, but it could use a few more minutes. I'm going to let the timer finish. The timer on the oven just turned off and it was about four minutes after my uh, phone timer went off. So the chicken has been cooking for 24 minutes. There's a lot of grease that dripped from the chicken onto the pan. Be careful when you take the pan out after making greasy foods because there is going to be a lot of grease on the pan and you don't want to tilt the pan accidentally and have hot grease dripping on you. Most of the chicken pieces are golden brown. There's one in the middle that's very light and one or two on the end, but generally they're pretty even. The bottom of the chicken is definitely lighter than the top. It's crispy. And it looks cooked. I'll just taste it. It's cooked perfectly, so you definitely need about 24 minutes for the wings to be cooked completely. All of the pieces came off the rack neatly. Nothing is stuck. Of course, there is some grease stuck to the rack. That's normal with pretty much any air fryer basket. I found that the easier way to clean air fryer baskets is just to soak it in hot soapy water for a few minutes, and then all this crusted stuff comes off much easier. You can see all the grease collected on the bottom of the pan. So this is a pretty healthy way to cook wings. We didn't deep fry them and we didn't add any oil to the chicken wings at all. These wings are crispy, they're tasty, and I think they're a good alternative to deep fried wings. To clean, turn off the unit and wait for it to cool. The outside can be wiped down with a damp cloth and dried. The sides of the oven are supposed to be non-stick, so it should be easy to clean. Wipe the inside using a mild soap. Put the soap directly on a cloth or a sponge. Don't use anything abrasive like steel wool pads. Make sure to clean the top of the oven, especially after cooking greasy foods. Slide out the crumb tray and empty that out. Baking pan, rack, basket are all hand wash only in hot soapy water. If you need to, you can use a nylon scouring pad or brush. They're not dishwasher safe. You saw how the Squeezinard did on the toast, french fries, and chicken wings. It's not a bad choice if you want the combination of a toaster, air fryer, and an oven. My only suggestion is to watch your food and watch the temperature because this unit does cook hotter and faster than a standard oven. If you want to try out the squeeze in art, I've put a link in the description below. If you own this unit and want to share your experience, leave your comments below. As always, I hope you found this review helpful. Don't forget to subscribe for more reviews of products you use every day. Thanks for watching.